y'all, Carrie here, your Watercolor Misfit, and today I thought I would try something a little bit different on this channel. Now, recently I've been doing a lot of really highly edited videos and more me talking head videos, and what I used to do on this channel is those types of videos mixed in with more of a conversation style video. and. I really miss that. So I wanted to try this new format and see how it goes. So what I'm gonna be doing is, this is a little bit different than a regular Q&A. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you a question and then I want you to write your responses to me. So this week's question, which I'm really excited about, is what is the best advice you ever received when it comes to watercolor? Now, most of you know my thoughts on this particular topic because I actually created a video on this a while back and I'm gonna link that in the corner. I never remember which corner it is, but I'm gonna link that in the corner and it will also be provided down down in the description box down below. Um, but if you want my ideas on that, you can watch that video later. But for right now, for this video, I'm going to be highlighting your answers and what you believe is the best advice you can get from like you've ever gotten for watercolor. So let's go ahead and jump into this, shall we? All right, so this person said Rizaldi Rizgardo, I'm gonna put it on the screen for you, says the best advice I received in watercolor is to study the color theory, or in my case, the color wheel. And that is so, so true. I can't tell you how much just studying the color wheel has helped me as well. For one of the paintings that I did on this channel that really did well was the Fox in the Mountain one. And I really studied the color wheel and how I wanted to incorporate those colors in that one. So if you notice with that particular illustration, my fox was orange, red, and yellow. And basically red and yellow together make orange. So I knew I wanted that fox to really pop out. So what I did is I chose the exact opposite color on the color wheel, which is blues. And that is what actually, that sharp contrast actually helps make that fox pop more. So knowing your color wheel is so key in understanding how colors mix, what colors work well together, and also how to really communicate well to your viewer with that painting. So I highly, highly agree. The next advice that I wanna highlight is from Brandy and Anna. Both of their advice kind of are in the same vein. But Brandy said, best advice I received was watercolor can be diff difficult and you're going to mess up an entire painting and it won't be what you want, but take those mistakes and learn from them for your best project. Every mistake is an opportunity to learn something and to make you better. And then Anna followed that up with, don't give up, just practice. And I totally, totally agree. There have been paintings that I have totally been stoked about they have I've just been really excited to paint them and then as I've started painting them they have ruined just within halfway through I hate it usually when it happens at the beginning and you have a, like a really big goof you can either cover it up or you can just go okay let's just start over but I hate it when the goof up happens when you're halfway through you've already invested time or towards the very end. And a lot of times what I just do is push to the very end, try and fix it as best as I can. I highly, highly advise you try and finish a painting, even if you feel like it's a goof. There's always an ugly stage in every painting, so just be aware of that. But sometimes there are some paintings that just aren't gonna turn out the way you envisioned them in your head. So it's best to flip that painting over and write on the back what went wrong and how you could fix it in the future. And I have to say, some of my big oops, like mistake paintings, have actually grown me so much as an artist. And you can see on this channel how much my art has changed and progressed. And it's because, as Anna said, I was continually practicing. Even if I felt like it wasn't a good painting, I was continually practicing and working through that painting and learning as I was doing it. So a lot of times what you see on Instagram and on YouTube for my channel is the nice perfected work. You don't really see the mess ups and the screw ups behind the scenes, but trust me, there are a lot. That's what 
watercolor journals are for. That's what those nice little sketchbooks are for. They're for your mistakes and they're for the things that you're not necessarily proud of and you don't want to show the world. But those are the things that actually build you up and build up your art style. So keep at it and don't give up. Sam said, best advice I ever received when doing watercolor was from my tutor in grade school, middle school. I would tend to overwork things while they were wet and not wait for them to dry. So she would tell me to just sit my hand, sit on your hands essentially, to just wait until it dries. Be patient. Um, to this day, it is one of the first things I say when a friend asks for advice with watercolor. And that's so true. Overworking is kind of the same as rushing or forcing your watercolor to do something that it's not meant to do at that particular time. So great piece of advice. Another great piece of advice from Rena, but I saw it in several other comments, was don't skip the basics. They are the key to a successful painting, i.e. knowing what to do, a flat wash, a gradient wash, water ratios, and color theory. Those are all her favorite, and I totally agree. I have to say, if you watch from the very beginning of my channel through the years, when I decided to really hone in on the basics and really work on those and teach those on this channel, my artwork started improving tremendously. Those basics plus the color theory as we talked about earlier really helped improve my particular art style and I wholeheartedly agree. If you feel like you want to bump yourself up to the next level or you feel like you're in a kind of hiccup, you will be so surprised at how much you will learn just by revisiting that. It's it's amazing how much I learned just by revisiting all of those basics and then teaching them to all of you. So I highly, highly recommend. I have to say though, I've seen a common theme over and over and over again. So I want to mention this in my Facebook post as well as my Instagram. Probably, I've seen probably about 20 comments that all say, use the right paper. It doesn't have to be expensive paper, but you have to use the right paper. And that is true. I just want to put that out there. My favorite paper to work on is Arches. However, Arches is really expensive and I know it's hard to get in some countries. So my cheaper, I would say, paper that I really highly recommend is B paper. I really, really like B paper. I started playing around with it in like December and actually the last painting that I did, I'll leave a link for that one. That's the seal in the inner tube and it's the salt painting. That particular one was done on B paper and actually the reason why I chose B paper over Arches paper is the B paper worked better with salt effects on it. So those are the two brands that I have worked with over the years that I really, really enjoy. But I do want to say I have worked with this particular brand right here. I always say the name wrong. I believe it's Hummamule, but I actually really do like this particular paper as well. And I know for some of my viewers who are in Europe, this is more widely available to you compared to Arches. I've actually done a couple of illustrations on this and really, really enjoyed it a lot. So, and actually some of the paintings on this particular channel, I've used this paper and played around with it and really enjoyed it. So those are the three brands that I've actually played around with a lot. Side note, I had a whole series dedicated to watercolor paper and trying them out and kind of pitting them against each other. And I was just about to start filming and that particular week, Mind of Watercolor put out the same idea. <laughs> and so I was like, um, nope. <laughs> I'll hold that for another time. So he has a series on his channel that goes into the papers and pits them off and it's really good. Um, but it's so funny because great minds think alike. We were both on the same page and we were both putting those together. I haven't talked to him. He hasn't talked to me, <laughs> but we both had the same idea and it just so happened he put out his first. Um, so I decided to just kind of hold back on that and he has great content on his channel too. So just a shout out to him as well. <laughs> And I think that's it for this particular video. I've noticed that the time is starting to run long, so I want to cut it here. Um, once again, thank you for all the responses. I'm going to be trying to like all of those responses from this moment that I've been filming um, backwards. 
and let you know that I did see those um, comments and those advice and posts and stuff like that. I do read through. I know I can't always respond to everyone's comments in the comment session of sections of YouTube and Instagram and Facebook, but I do see them. I do read through. I have a free moment. I am reading through those comments and I love hearing your feedback. So just know I am seeing those and I'm gonna try really hard to make sure that I'm liking them and letting you know I did see them. Anyway, y'all, I hope you had an, a fun time with me as I did with you, kind of reading all of your advice and I will see you next time. Lots of love, y'all. Bye.